GM's Pontiac Motor Division was certainly hitting its stride in the mid and late 1960s with a number of hits, everything from the main full-size cars to the GTO, to the Tempest, the Firebird, and the 1969 Grand Prix. Ever since its introduction for the 1962 model year, the Grand Prix had been based on the full-size Pontiac chassis, more specifically the short wheelbase or Catalina wheelbase full-size Pontiacs. But for 1969 and after the 1968 sales flop, John DeLorean, then the general manager of Pontiac, wanted to take the Grand Prix in an entirely different direction. Instead of building the car off of the full-size General Motors platform, it would instead come off of the A-body intermediates with an elongated front end that would give the car significant presence on the road. And this is where we begin our list of top five things that you never knew about the 1969-72 Grand Prix. Let's begin with number five. It actually wasn't slated to be based on the intermediate car. When the program for the 1969 Grand Prix was started, it was actually going to be very similar to the 1968 model and really a refresh of what would end up being a one-year-only model. This made complete sense because the car had just been introduced in 1968, but it was a sales flop. And as a consequence, designers and John DeLorean started looking around to see what they could do to the 1969 Grand Prix as opposed to taking it off of the full-size platform. Here is a full-size clay from January of 1967 out on GM's design patio for what was supposed to be the 1969 Grand Prix. You can see the shape and form is overall quite similar to the 1968 Grand Prix and really not all that appealing when you compare it to the actual release 1969 Grand Prix. One thing that you may note, though, is that that rear quarter panel, at least to my eye, seemingly resembles the 1972 Plymouth Fury. But regardless, I'm glad they came out with the Grand Prix that they did, because had this 1969 Grand Prix been released, it likely would have been the sales flop that the 1968 model was that sold just 31,711 units. Let's talk now about item number four. The Grand Prix for 1969 actually had trims, that were named after Duesenbergs. When the 1969 Grand Prix was introduced, it had two trim lines that were named after Duesenbergs, the J and the SJ. This was actually the brainchild of none other than John DeLorean himself. Many in the building looked at him rather strangely when he suggested naming the Grand Prix trims the J and the SJ, because frankly, a lot of individuals by that point didn't recognize that they came from Duesenberg. In fact, a number of individuals at GM joked that the J stood for John and the SJ stood for Super John. But, in fact, it didn't. The 1969 Grand Prix did have interesting engines under hood, but one thing it didn't have that the SJ would have connoted on a real Duesenberg was a supercharger. You did end up getting a 428 cubic inch V8 as opposed to the standard 400 cubic inch V8 when you picked the SJ, along with a number of other things. But... Alas, there was no supercharger. Now, why would John DeLorean pick names from a Duesenberg? Well, during this time period, a number of senior individuals at General Motors, including, frankly, Bill Mitchell, GM styling vice president, seemed to have fallen in love with the romantic cars of the 1930s and before. And for whatever reason, that dictated, frankly, GM styling for a number of years to come. So it made sense that in this era where the Great Gatsby film was also made in 1974, that there was a affinity to have throwback titles, and this was the choice of John DeLorean for his 1969 Grand Prix J and SJ. Let's move on to number three, and that is the grill on the 1969 Grand Prix was actually inspired by the old Miller race cars of the 1920s. I just mentioned that many within GM's halls had a particular affinity for the 1920s and 1930s era vehicles. And for whatever reason, Bill Mitchell himself allegedly wanted the front end grille on the 1969 Grand Prix to resemble an old Miller race car. That particular grille on these Miller vehicles was relatively rounded and had very fine horizontal blades that were chromed. Unfortunately for Pontiac on the 1969 Grand Prix, they couldn't get those blades to be chromed, and so they were made out of extruded aluminum instead. But 
The schnoz on the 1969 Pontiac and that very pronounced grill did have its origins in that beautiful 1920s era Miller race car. And when you put them side by side, you can frankly see it. It's one of the most distinctive features on the 69 Grand Prix, and many would say it's actually a beautiful detail. And I have to tend to agree with them. But it did not come from Pontiac heritage. The inspiration for this grill came from that Miller race car. At number two, we're going to transition from the exterior to the interior of the 1969 Grand Prix because it was the first American vehicle to really have a driver-centric cockpit. Pontiac in its 1969 brochure stated, Up front, you're faced by a cockpit-style instrument panel that almost lays every gauge, control, and switch in your lap. This beautiful instrument panel theme was something that is very common today, but back in 1969 had really not been seen on American vehicles. It had a three-sided layout that was wrapped around the driver, with a center section that was filled by different pods for gauges, including the speedometer, the clock, and the tachometer. Of course, it wouldn't have been an American personal luxury coupe if it didn't have a little bit of faux wood grain in it. And the 1969 Grand Prix interior had some faux Carpathian burled elm inlay that was part of the dash. HVAC controls were mounted high and on the right-hand side of the driver's cockpit. And there was a center console with a gear shift it was interestingly canted toward the driver and not just simply flat. It was an overall excellent interior theme that unfortunately was let down a bit by the choice of materials that were employed, but it was still handsome nonetheless. Let's move on to the number one fact that you may not have known about the 1969 Grand Prix, and that is that its exterior door handles were inspired by the Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing. If you've seen a 1969 Pontiac Grand Prix in the flesh, you'll recognize that its door handles certainly are not standard GM fare. At the time, GM had typical pull handles with a push button or a long, flat surface that you had to pull upward to enter the vehicle. But the 1969 Grand Prix's door handles are really a work of art. You have to push on the one end of the door handle to get it to swing outward, and then you pull harder for the door to release. It's an extremely tasteful design and one that goes along with the character of the car and highlights its overall sleek body shape. Now, another interesting fact about these door handles is that the mechanism would actually reappear on a number of vehicles across the GM lineup, but the door handles themselves would take different shapes. More specifically, the 1971 Riviera and 1971 Tornado used the same mechanism for their door handles, but those door handles had more of a grab handle-like shape as opposed to the Grand Prix's where you had to push on the door handle to reveal the actual pole itself. In any case, hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the 1969-72 Grand Prix and some of the elements that made it different from other vehicles. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.